नमस्कार द टॉपिक ऑफ द लेसन टुडे इज ऑन द लैंड यूज इन सदर्न इंडिया ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेर दैट इंडिया इज ए लार्ज एंड डाइवर्स कंट्री इट्स जोग्रफिकल एरिया इंक्लूड्स रीजियंस विथ सम ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स हाइएस्ट रेनफॉल जोन्स टू द लोएस्ट रेनफॉल रीजियंस द कोस्ट लाइन टू द आलपाइन रीजियंस river deltas to the tropical islands india has got a very diversified condition in geography ranging from the rainforest of kerala in the south to the alpine pastures of ladakh hills in the north from the deserts of rajasthan in the west to the evergreen forests in the northeast all of them show that india has a diverse range of landforms land is a valuable natural resource land is utilized for cultivation of crops settlement of populations creation of dams and reservoirs establishment and development of industries and maintaining the forest and also the wildlife any kind of permanent or cyclic intervention of a land is called as the land use it is the surface utilization of a vacant land or a developed land for a clear purpose at a given time the utility value and the type of land use depend on several factors the important factors are the geographic location physiographic condition availability of water resources fertility of the soil and proximity to other human activities the land use distribution in india has been mapped by the national atlas and thematic mapping organization for our utility for a better understanding the country is spatially divided into several regions and plates and maps we shall try to learn them with reference to these plates and regions for convenience sake we have classified the land use distribution of india into the following regions land use of northern india land use of central india land use of western india land use of eastern india and the land use of southern india so in this series we are understanding and studying the land use of india in five different regional concepts the land use of southern india are explained in this lesson the aspects which are covered in this lesson are the general classification of land use land use of mumbai plate land use of hyderabad plate land use of chennai bangalore plate and the land use of tiruvananthapuram plate let us see the first part of the general classification of land use a large number of land use types and categories have been recognized and studied and worked out by various researchers of different organizations the classification of land into various uses and how these uses change over a period of time will help us in understanding and planning of the land resources in india out of the total geographical area of 328.73 million hectares the land use statistics are available for roughly about 305 million hectares this itself contributes to about 93% of the total land area of india which has been mapped already for our utilization land use is basically classified into the following major types the first one is agriculture lands the second one is forest lands the third one is non agriculture lands the fourth one belongs to grazing lands and the fifth category is the unproductive lands the agricultural land includes irrigated crop lands unirrigated crop lands and plantation areas forests are central to all human activities because forests provide a diverse range of products and resources the forest areas are classified into reserved forest protected forest and unclassed forest term forest here means a reserved forest protected forest 
unclassed forest and the village forest they also include waste lands or range lands forest lands are notified by the government to develop protect and conserve the forest resources including the wildlife the recorded forest area is the geographic areas recorded as forest in the government records reserved forests are the forest areas constituted under the provisions of the indian forest act or other state forest acts having full degree of protection the reserved forests also include activities that are prohibited unless permitted protected forest is an area notified under the provisions of indian forest act 1927 and also the other state forest acts having limited degree of protection in protected forest all activities are permitted unless prohibited these areas include national parks and wildlife sanctuaries the unclassed forest areas are lands that are not classified as reserved or protected forests but they are with the government the non agricultural lands are classified further into urban settlement regions mining areas and rural settlement places the areas of unproductive lands are also classified into the following categories of land use they are the sandy zones the rocky zones the saline zones bad lands and the snow fields let us see the distribution pattern of these land use patterns in different parts of the country the first one is the land use of mumbai plate the distribution of land use in the mumbai gulbarga region is seen in this map this area is bordered by the arabian sea in the west physiographically this region comprises of the maharashtra plateau karnataka plateau and the south konkani coast india's prominent places including nasik and aurangabad in the north nanded and parbani in the northeast mumbai and pune in the northwest sholapur and usmanabad in the middle gulbarga in the east satara and ratnagiri in the west sangli and kolhapur in the southwest mahboobnagar and raichur in the southeast and bijapur in the south are the places located in this region this region is drained by the godavari bhima and krishna rivers all of them flow towards east several west flowing streams are also distributed along the western parts of this region if we look at the prevailing land use patterns of this region we could see the distribution of agriculture lands forests non agricultural lands grazing lands and unproductive lands the agricultural land includes irrigated crop lands unirrigated crop lands and plantation areas the irrigated crop lands are distributed in the northern parts around nanded and kopargaon in the central part between pune and sholapur and in the southern part around belgaum and raichur the major crops grown in the irrigated zones are bananas sugarcane wheat rice fodder and pulses the unirrigated crop lands are distributed almost two third of this region they are spread from north to south in the plateau regions the major crops grown in the unirrigated zones are jowar fodder pulses cotton rice bajra groundnut and sugarcane the minor crops grown in the unirrigated zones are vegetables chili wheat maize oil seeds tobacco mango and other fruits the forest areas of this region include reserved forest protected and unclassed forest protected forests are seen in some places reserved forests are seen in the western region around mumbai and satara areas unclassed forests are seen around the southwestern region west of kolhapur 
spreading from north to south. The non-agricultural lands of this region in India includes urban settlements, mining areas and rural settlements. The major urban areas of this region are Mumbai, Pune, Ahmednagar, Nasik, Aurangabad, Nanded, Sholapur, Sangli, Kolapur, Bijapur and Gulbarga. This region also contain a good amount of grazing lands covered by grass and scrubs. The grasslands are distributed as disseminated pockets in the central and western parts from north to south. The scrub lands are distributed in the coastal region around forest lands and in some parts of the eastern region. This region is also characterized by a small area of unproductive land consisting of rocky zones, bad lands and coastal regions. The rocky zones are confined to the Karnataka plateau areas from Kolapur to Sholapur. Badlands are very rare in this region. They are also distributed as small pockets. Let us see the land use of Hyderabad plate. The distribution of land use in Hyderabad, Warangal, Vishagapatnam and Guntu region is seen in this map. This area is bordered by the Bay of Bengal in the east. Physiographically, this region comprises of the parts of the Eastern Ghats, the Godavari Delta and the Telangana Plateau. India's prominent places including Chatrapur in the northeast, Warangal in the middle, Vishagapatnam and Srikakulam in the east, Hyderabad and Nizamabad in the west, Kakinada and Mashulipatnam in the southeast and Guntur and Vijayawada in the south are the important places located in this region. This region is drained by the Godavari and Krishna rivers. If we look at the prevailing land use patterns of this region, we could see the distribution of agricultural lands, forests, non-agricultural lands, grazing lands and unproductive lands. The agricultural land includes irrigated cropland, unirrigated cropland and plantation areas. The irrigated croplands are distributed only along the deltaic regions. They are in the northern parts around Chatrapur and Srikakulam areas and in the eastern parts around Machilipatnam, Kakinada, Vijayawada and Rajamundri areas. The major crops grown in the irrigated zones are fruits, rice, vegetables and tobacco. The unirrigated croplands are distributed over a vast region. They are in the western part around Warangal, Hyderabad and Karimnagar. In the eastern part around Koraput and Vijayanagaram and in the southern part around Guntur and Kambam regions. The major crops grown in the unirrigated zones are Jowar, Rice, Groundnut, Millets, Pulses and Cotton. The minor crops grown in the unirrigated zones are Pulses, Sugarcane, Bajra, Castor, Maize, Oil Seeds, Rape Seeds, Mustard and Ragi. The distinctive feature of this area in India is it is the rice bowl of the Krishna Godavari Delta. The forest areas of this region include reserved, protected and unclassed forest. Reserved forests are seen around the eastern guards over a vast area in the northern parts and also in the Sri Silam Plateau in the southern part. Unclassed forests are seen in the northern parts. The non-agricultural lands of this region in India includes both urban settlements and rural settlements. The major urban settlement areas of this region are Hyderabad, Nizamabad, Warangal, Vijayawada, Guntur, Rajamundri, Kakinada and Vishagapatnam. This region also contain a few patches of grazing lands covered by grass and scrubs. This region is also characterized by small pieces of unproductive land consisting of sandy zones and rocky zones.
Let us see the land use of Chennai Bangalore plate. The distribution of land use in Mangalore, Bangalore and Chennai region is seen in this map. This area is bordered by the Bay of Bengal in the east and the Arabian Sea in the west. Physiographically, this region comprises of the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats. India's prominent places including Karnul in the north, Ongol in the northeast, Panaji and Belgaum in the northwest, Bellari, Anantapur and Chitradurga in the middle, Chennai in the east, Mangalore and Karwar in the west, Merkara in the southwest, Dharmaburi in the southeast and Mysore and Bangalore in the south are the important places located in this region. This region is drained by the Tungabhatra river, the Penna river, the Palar and the Kaveri rivers. If we look at the prevailing land use patterns of this region, we could see the distribution of agricultural lands, forests, non-agricultural lands, grazing lands and unproductive lands. The agricultural lands includes irrigated croplands, unirrigated croplands and plantation areas. The irrigated croplands are distributed in the northern parts around Tungabhadra floodplain areas and Karnul region, in the eastern parts around Vellur Kanchipuram region and in the southern part around Mandya Mysore region. The major crops grown in the irrigated zones are rice, groundnut and sugarcane. The unirrigated croplands are distributed over a vast region. They are in the northern parts from Belgaum to Ongol, in the central part from Shimoga to Pulikat Lake, in the western part around Manglur coast and Hassan areas, in the eastern parts around Kolar, Chitur and Chennai region and also in the southern part around Mysore, Dharmapuri and Vellur areas. The major crops grown in the unirrigated zones are Jowar, cotton, groundnut, ragi, pulses and rice. The minor crops grown in the unirrigated zones are fruits, pulses, gram, vegetables, wheat and tobacco. The plantation areas are distributed around Merkara region and also the Chikmaglu region. The crops planted in the plantation areas are coffee and rubber. The forest areas of this region include reserved, protected and unclassed forests. Reserved forests are seen all along the western guards and also in the eastern guards. Protected forests are seen in the places of west of Merkara and also in places near Belgaum. The non-agricultural lands of this region in India includes urban settlements, mining areas and rural settlements. The major urban areas of this region are Panaji, Belgaum, Bellari, Karnul, Ongol, Nellur, Kadappa, Anandapur, Chitradurka, Shimoga, Mangalur, Hasan, Merkara, Tumkur, Mysore, Mandya, Bangalore, Kolar, Chittur, Tarmaburi, Vellur, Kanchipuram, Chennai and Nellur regions. Mining areas are located in Bellari region. This region is also contain a good amount of grazing lands covered by grass and scrubs. The grasslands are spread over the plains. The scrublands are distributed in the form of patches all over this region. This region is also characterized by a vast area of unproductive lands consisting of sandy coastal zone, rocky zone and bad lands. Let us see the land use of Thiruvananthapuram plate. The land use pattern of Tamil Nadu and Kerala region are seen in this map. Physiographically, this region has the Western Ghats, the Nilgiri Hills, the Palni Hills and the Anamalai Hills. This region is also endowed with forest, a vast area of plain land and a long stretch of coastal belt. This part of the peninsular India is bounded by the Arabian Sea in the west and the Bay of Bengal in the east. The Gulf of Mannar and Palk Bay are the portions of Bay of Bengal existing in the southeastern side of this region. This region has Tamil Nadu in the eastern part 
and Kerala in the western part. This area is covered from Salem and Coimbatore in the north, Pondicherry, Kadalur in the northeast, Kannanur and Calicut in the northwest, Madurai and Trichrapalli in the middle, Tanjavur and Ramnathapuram in the east, Koilon, Tiruvananthapuram, Tutukorin, Palayam Kotai and Nagargoil in the south. This region is drained by the Kaveri river in the northern parts, Vaiga river in the central parts and Thamraparni river in the southern part. All of them are east flowing rivers. There are a few west flowing streams in the state of Kerala. If you look at the prevailing land use patterns of this region, we could see the distribution of agriculture lands, forests, non-agriculture lands, grazing lands and unproductive lands. The agricultural land includes irrigated croplands, unirrigated croplands and plantation areas. The irrigated croplands are distributed along the floodplain areas of the river Kaveri, the river Vaigai and the river Tamraparni. The entire Kaveri delta which is called as the granary of Tamil Nadu is very prominent with a large number of distributaries in the eastern part of this region. In this region, rice is cultivated as a major crop. The unirrigated croplands are one of the major land units in this zone. They occur as a very vast area from Salem, Coimbatore to Madurai and it goes up to Nagargoil. They belong to the Palgat uplands, Kongunad uplands, Dindugal plains, Arupukotai plains, Sankara Nainar plains, Chitar plains and Nongneri plains. In this vast zone, groundnut, sugarcane, chilli, cotton, vegetables, gram, pulses and rice are grown. All along the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu, coconut, grams and tobacco are also grown. Kerala coast is known for coconut, fruits and vegetables, sesamum and rubber. Palkat Gap, Kambam Valley, Ernakulam, Alapi, Koilan Valley regions show unirrigated croplands in the flanks of the Western Ghats. The peaks of hills distributed all along the Western Ghats from north to south contain several parts as plantation zones. Coffee, tea and rubber plantations are seen in these regions. Western Ghats in India is one of the biodiversity hotspots which is located in this particular zone. Hills and mountains stretch from Nilgiris to Cape Comorin in the northwest and southeast direction. Extensive areas along this stretch have reserved forest. The protected forests are seen along the flanks as small small patches. In the northwest region, Kambam Valley region and in the catchment area of Tamraparni. It is also seen along the region east of Salem. Under the category of non-agriculture land, we have the urban and rural settlements and some mining areas. Puducherry, Kadalur, Salem, Tirupattur, Coimbatore, Uti, Tiruchirappalli, Tanjavur, Karaikal, Madurai, Palayam Kotai, Tutukorin, Ramanathapuram, Nagargoil in the Tamil Nadu region and Tiruvananthapuram, Koilan, Alapi, Ernakulam, Kolikod, Tirichur, Mallapuram, Kannanur and Palkad in the Kerala state are the important locations of this region. The rural settlements occupying all along the slopes of the western Ghats and also in the coastal belt of Kerala state are very distinct features. In addition to these, a few pockets of grazing land and scrub lands are also distributed in a scattered manner. Not much of unproductive lands are existing in this region of India. The economic value of a region depends on the properties of land use. Land use is also is an emerging socio-economic activity in any region. It is a very important subject of study and uh, it is helpful for several human activities. Population explosion, demand for increased production of commodities, establishment of varieties of infrastructural facilities like road networks, airports, layouts, flyovers, bridges and canals and such other human activities require the land to be used 
and uh, during the process of creating these infrastructural facilities, these activities may force us to convert one land use to that of the other. Land use is an important activity. Land use planning is an important factor for consideration in a developed economy. Land use planning is a separate branch of study in geography, geology, town planning, architecture, forestry, agriculture, civil and environmental engineering and also in development studies. Proper land use practice is necessary for long term sustenance of human beings. South Asian Archipelago While many island ecosystems are found in South Asia, those with critical geopolitical significance include the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands in India, Indonesian Islands, Taiwan, the islands in the Korean Sea and the four big islands in Japan, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman Nicobar Islands spread from 14 degrees 24 north latitude, 93 degrees 10 east longitude to 6 degrees 13 north latitude to 93 degrees 57 east longitude. The total land mass of all the islands put together sums up to 8,249 square kilometers. The northern group of islands called the Andaman district is separated from the Nicobar group of islands by the 10 degrees channel. It spans 139 kilometers wide and 1,399 meters deep. There are over 572 islands in the island chain. Only 35 of these are inhabited. Over 86% of the landmass enjoys forest cover. Being thus so strategically located, the island's enhanced geopolitical significance is crucial to the entire Asia-Pacific and the South Asian region. The different islands in the Andaman Nicobar Archipelago include the following islands. Triparis, Great Coco, Little Coco, Landfall, Nakondam, West Island, North Reef, South Island, Long Island, Barren Island, North Passage, Henry Lawrence, Andaman Nicobar Ridge, John Lawrence, Keed, Neil Island, Rutland, Sink, Passage, North Brother, North Sentinel, South Sentinel Island in the northern group of islands in the Andaman district and in the Nicobar district's islands we find Kha Nicobar, Batimav, Chaura, Tilanchong, Isle of Man, Teresa, Kamota, Katchel, Little Nicobar, Kondul and Great Nicobar. The Indonesian archipelago sits on the Sunda plate or the Australasian plate and also in terms of geopolitics belongs more to ASEAN than to South Asia. Though the entire island chain is a volcanic ecosystem, only three islands have recorded eruptions. Barren Island is still an active volcano. Nakondam is dormant and Invisible Bank is an extinct volcano. Besides, there is a mud volcano in Baratang in the Jarawa reserves in Middle Andamans. Geopolitical significance. Other islands like Maldives, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Diogo Garcia, Mauritius, Madagascar and Singapore are also crucial stakes for global powers. Dozens of countries seek a base for their defense installations. Economic powers like USA, UK, Australia, India, China and France besides the countries on the Indian, o Indian Ocean Rim seek to optimize the utilization of resources that obtains from land in this crucial region. The contours of the different ecosystems that prevail in this vast continent thus offer different terrain patterns and different biodiversity profiles. Together with the rainfall, weather vagaries and climatic pa patterns, Asians have thus inherited rich and diverse agrodiversity. This rich agrodiversity manifests in the form of horticulture, floriculture, fisheries, animal husbandry, 
harvesting of minor forest produce like honey, lichens and mosses, medicinal herbs, etc. All these human activities have been engendered into the lifestyles of different groups of people who have grown accustomed to the bounty offered by Mother Nature. We thus see how traditions have evolved around natural resources. That is what is meant by agro-meteorological factors conditioning traditional vocations. With this insight, dear students, you now have a fairly in-depth perspective of how the Mother Earth has literally shaped up the place we live in. In this chapter, we have understood the origins of the continents and the diverse geographical and geological factors that have shaped our lives in this thriving, heart-throbbing continent called Asia. In our next episode, we shall understand how the land is influenced by and influences terrain pattern. I hope you will join us then.